story begins with cookies. Not because cookies are terribly important to the story, but everybody likes cookies, so why not start the story there? I work in a hospital, and I work closely with the social workers. I brought a box of cookies to the social work office. In return, did I get a thank you? Well, I probably did get a thank you, but I don't really remember that. What I do remember is I got an intervention. One of the social workers brought me into a room. She called in another social worker who had more experience with psych patients. They called in my boss, who brought her boss. I don't remember the specifics of what was said, but basically it was something like, we've noticed that you haven't been as engaged or focused lately. You're withdrawn. You're not as concerned about your appearance. We're concerned about things you've said, like you're not good enough or you wonder who would miss you. You're not OK. You need to do something. What are you willing to do to take care of yourself? It was good that they gave me a choice. The choice was not do nothing. But I had some control over the specific choice. I chose to go to a hospital. Why? Because I knew I really needed help. I just needed someone to point it out. And I had worked in a psychiatric hospital, so I knew what it was like. Imagine if I hadn't. My only image of a psychiatric hospital would be what the media shows, an insane asylum, an image so terrifying that many horror films and haunted houses take place in insane asylums. This is stigma. Furthermore, try Googling costumes for psychiatric patients like I did. You'll get a bunch of bloody straitjackets, often with knives and other deadly weapons. Now, if you had the chutzpah to do the same for cancer patients, do you know what you would get? A lot of pink ribbons. Now, we all know that cancer isn't all pretty and pink with ribbons. And yet, no one would dare mock what a cancer patient goes through by having a costume. And yet, they do for psychiatric patients. This is why it is so difficult for people to reach out and get help. But fortunately, I knew I needed help. So I went to the hospital, the same hospital I had worked in. I stayed five days and was discharged to a PHP, partial hospitalization program, which meets five days a week, six hours a day. Unfortunately, I was discharged on a Friday, and the program didn't start until Tuesday. These were some of the hardest days of my life, even harder than before I went to the hospital. I mention this in case you know someone who's been discharged from a hospital. Don't assume they're OK. Check in on them. I was alone and wasn't sure what to do. I called the suicide hotline, but I wasn't suicidal, so they wouldn't help me. Fortunately, I had a friend I could call who helped guide me and talk me through my anxiety attacks. I started the PHP program. It was a, in a different hospital that I had once worked in, and one of the staff knew me. She approached me and said, you don't belong here because I didn't fit the image of a psychiatric patient. But I did belong there because depression doesn't discriminate and I needed help getting out of the deep pit of darkness that I was in. I thought I would only stay a couple weeks. After all, I had both my kids while I was in graduate school, and both times I went back to school when they were only 10 days old. I wasn't one to take a lot of time off, but it turned out that I needed it. The PHP program saved my life. I met many other women on the road to recovery. Our paths were different. Yet at some point, our roads intersected and we held each other's hands along the way. The people I met were amazing. I thought we were so different at first, yet I realized that we were very much alike. The professionals in the program helped guide us to the light. They sat with us, listened to us, heard us cry, comforted us, and taught us. When I went back to work six weeks later, my struggle with depression wasn't over, but I was better able to cope and manage it. And I had lots of family and friends I could lean on, whether it was to help with the kids, feed me, comfort me, or laugh with me. They were there for me. They helped me because we're better together. Remember the cookies? I said they weren't important, and they weren't really. But the reason I brought the cookies is significant. I brought the cookies because it was the Jewish holiday of Purim, kind of like the Jewish Halloween, except with cookies instead of candies. 
It's the holiday in which we dress up in costume. It's significant because for many months, I'd been wearing a costume, a mask that said I was okay, that everything was all right. It took a caring eye to see that mask and realize that I really needed help. So that year on Purim, instead of wearing a mask, I took one off. I share my story because so many people can't. The stigma is so great that they leave the mask on. And yet if people can see that I, a rabbi, mother, active community member can suffer from mental illness, it can help reduce the stigma. I share my story so that people don't have to feel shame in reaching out and getting help. And you don't have to fear approaching someone and offering help. Depression is not sadness. It's a monster that blocks out the sunlight. It whispers lies in your ears, lies that you're not good enough, that no one likes you, that you don't deserve to live. It grabs at your ankles as you try to get out of bed, pulls you down as you try to walk forward. It's a monster that doesn't discriminate. It's not just there because you've suffered loss or trauma. It doesn't just visit because you've gone through a breakup or have financial struggles. It can be there even if you have a seemingly perfect life, even if you have nothing to be sad about, even if you're a rabbi, mother, and active community member. The monster lingers because people get so used to it, they're afraid they're not gonna know what to do once it's gone. Or they think it's a friend, even though it's hurting them. Many times people don't even recognize that the monster's there. Yet the good news is, with help, we can get rid of the monster, or at least take away its power. We can be the first step in someone getting help. You don't have to be a social worker. You don't have to do an intervention. In fact, one-on-one -on -one is probably better. Many people don't reach out because of fear. They don't know what to do, or they're afraid they'll say the wrong thing. But you know, you don't need to do much. You just need to care. So if you notice someone with the mask, with the monster lingering nearby, what can you do? First, what not to do. Don't say, what do you have to, to be depressed about? You have everything going for you. Or don't say, it's all in your head. Don't say, it's no big deal. Everybody gets depressed sometimes. Don't say, happiness is a choice. Just choose to be happy. <laughs> Don't minimize their experience. Rather, what you can do is sit with them. Let them know that you see the monster and you're concerned about them. Guide them to get appropriate professional help, whether it's taking them to the first appointment, bringing them to a hospital if necessary, making the first phone call, or giving them resources. The monster doesn't like light or company. Be that light, be that company. Let's be monster slayers. I am proof that together we can do it. And cookies never hurt. <laughs>